Hail, O ye mighty sylphs, descend over shafts of devotion, raised up by children of the sun and sons of God. Descend, O mighty sylphs, for the purification of the mind, for the purification of the lungs, for the purification of every organ and system in the bodies of the light bearers of the earth. Let this purification go forth. Let it go forth, O sylphs, mighty sylphs, for thereby in participation with the healing angels, you shall bring about healing, healing unto our servants, and in their healing, they shall turn to serve and set elemental life free. Let us have chalices in the earth then that can contain the purity of fire, the purity of air, the purity of water, the purity of the earth, and the purity of the spirit. So we come, Aries and Thor, by mighty light rays, and by or call, and by the immaculate heart of Mary you have invoked, we descend into deep levels of the earth into the astral plane and we are on the march for we are here and we also have Neptune's key and that key beloved is to unlock the prison doors of those souls who have fallen into the ditches of the astral plane and know not how to remove themselves thus beloved we, the hierarchs of the sylphs, count ourselves also among the saviors of all souls in the earth who would be saved and those who ought to be saved for who they are and were and can become again. Some have turned themselves around, but they have turned the wrong way and ignored the wrong way sign and therefore we come with the mighty power of the air, with the mighty power of the entire atmosphere, with the mighty empowerment of the Holy Spirit to breathe the breath of life and the sacred breath itself. Yes, we are a part of your meditations when you raise up the sacred fire and by the sacred fire breath multiply the fire within you. Thus, beloved, there are commanding presences in our bands. There are the hierarchs who have earned the threefold flame and they abide in upper levels of consciousness in the etheric octave. And they in our retreats are training sylphs and training those among the sons and daughters of God to work with the sylphs. You are indeed blessed, indeed blessed by the winds of the spirit that move through the mountains, that move through the forests, that are charged and recharged again. Surely there is good reason and logic to live in the high altitudes of the earth and to make one's way in the spirit of God moving across the mountains of earth and the mountains of one's own karma and dispensing with that by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the sacred breath, using that breath always when you invoke the violet flame. Hear then the fire of my voice, hear the fire going forth through the body of the messenger and know that you can project that fire also, that you can store it in your chakras, you can deliver it, you can part the darkness and the Red Sea of the mass consciousness and you can play such music of the higher octaves as you have just heard to neutralize conditions of darkness 
to neutralize the misuse of sound and of rhythm, and most of all, beloved, of that which you see in motion pictures and on television. Clear the screen of the mind and do not allow yourself, if you would be adept, to engage in such livelihoods as will take you to the astral plane in the industries of the world. Choose your livelihood well, according to the teaching of Gautama Buddha. Choose it well, for ye are sons of God unique, who can indeed hold the balance for a planet. Thus I speak then of the conditions of pollution, pollution in the very heart of the major cities, pollution of the air that quickly becomes the pollution of the water and the pollution of the earth. And thus that pollution does take life and sanity and oneness and unity from the millions and billions of souls upon planet earth. What a pity, beloved, what a pity that all do not praise Helios and Vesta and call unto the rays of the sun. This you can do in the ritual to the great central sun, for the rays of Helios and Vesta are indeed purifying rays. And as you seek and become one with those rays, understanding yourself as extensions of Helios and Vesta in this very earth. You will come to understand the science of purification by the rays of the sun. Until this is fully established scientifically in the earth, then give the mantra and the ritual of the ashram of El Moria to Helios and Vesta, knowing that the light of the sun is able to work transmutation and does in effect multiply the power of the violet flame. Know then, beloved, that the power is in your son. Should you choose to invoke that power and to base your own power upon that son at every level of being, you will find that there can be a staying action in the earth by the staying of the hand of the Lord God and of Elohim, that earth changes need not happen. These must happen for the purpose of purification. So you see, if you accomplish the work and the work of Omri Tas in those 48 hours you have each month so precious and accomplish the work of Helios and Vesta, you will know then how the power of Helios and Vesta can multiply purification in the earth. This is the need of the hour. Every single human being alive with only small percentages of exceptions require the purification of the blood, the purification of the body. Yes, beloved, how can anyone reach the full potential of individual Christhood without that mighty purification. And ye indeed have the power of Astraea. Ye who are those who give that decree frequently, daily, you have the whirlwind action of the vortex of the circle and sword of blue flame. You have that power of purity, beloved, and it can be seen. We can see it across many miles. We take note of everyone upon earth who has that aura of Australian purity. It is an aura of invincibility. It is an aura of protection. It is an aura wherein discarnates do not dare to enter. You have such a sealing action, beloved, by the calls to Australia that I tell you, you are weaving your deathless solar body and doing well and many of you are right on schedule with the timetable of your own victory in the light. See then how the power of Astraea has also sustained all elemental life. For when you make the call to Astraea and give those decrees, Gautama Buddha, the Lord of the world, has assigned that a portion of those decrees go for the blessing of elemental life. It is good indeed that you end each preamble, elemental life, fire, air, water, and earth, 
For by that beloved, a portion continually goes to what may be considered your favorite charity. Charity begins with elemental life, for you exist upon the foundations of their service. Now this conference is convoked. It is convoked for the healing of the elementals, and the Blessed Mother will sh see to this with Archangel Raphael. May you continue to understand your oneness with all life, counting angels above and elementals all around you as a team and effort of sons and daughters of God, angels and elementals. It is truly the trinity of life and the power of that trinity through the Christed sons and daughters is the power to bring earth into a golden age. For when you have the key and you use the key of Neptune, beloved, you have the key of alchemy, you have the key whereby you can begin to understand your role as a son of God, as rulers in the earth, as rulers and defenders of elementals. Those who rule, beloved, are those who serve to set life free. Thus, do not in any way limit yourselves, but come to this altar fresh, with a clean heart, a pure spirit, and a powerful determination, an inner conviction that is truly profound, that the solutions to Earth's problems are at hand, and they are in your hand as the violet flame bursts forth from the very center of your palm, from the chakra, the lesser chakras of the hands of Jesus crucified. Know then, therefore, that all things can be accomplished, and as you decide to take another turn up the spiral highway of life, into higher and higher octaves of elevation of the mind, you shall know that God dominion, you shall walk the earth as unascended masters, you shall walk the earth knowing that though you have not shuffled off the mortal coil, yet your immortality shines brightly and has access to the power of God to work change, work change in everyone you know by cultivating a sincere friendship with a body elemental of all of your friends. And as you speak to those elementals and calm their fears and teach them how to heal the body, you shall know a victory, you shall know a balancing of karma, you shall know a brightness that shall descend upon you, and the rainbow rays of God you shall see, and they shall be your very own causal body of light that you are able to first sense and know, and then to dimly see, and then ultimately to face the presence of God face to face as Moses did. The greatest want among all those who are devotees of God is the want of self-appreciation is the limited understanding of the all power of God that is vouchsafed to you every moment and every hour and every day, whereby you have the strength, the intelligence, the love, the devotion, and the sagacity to enter in to the ranks of the elementals. I would tell you, beloved ones, that Walt Disney has done a disservice to elemental life portraying them as being moody and not too intelligent. Well, blessed hearts, I wish that you could enter, and therefore I will assist you in entering into the minds of the sylphs, gnomes, undines, fiery salamanders, and into the mind of your most blessed and highly intelligent body elemental. Therefore, recognize that there is an indeed an overlay of mankind's consciousness upon elementals, and because that is there, they are bowed down, and therefore they are not necessarily always in the best of spirits. But they are not cross-eyed and pigeon-toed and always fat and always having some sort of uh, heaviness about them you must realize that the work that is accomplished by elementals is accomplished by experts. Simply look around you at all of life and the absolute magnificence of this planetary body and ask yourself 
Whether demented and lazy gnomes could have accomplished such a task, I tell you nay. And therefore, root for the elementals, pour a violet flame upon them, and bring them to daily new levels of consciousness, whereby even the greater glory of God might appear, and they might accomplish that which seems impossible, but they shall accomplish it by the power of Elohim reinforcing them. And that task, beloved ones, is the purification of the planetary body. You have seen many storms and earthquakes in the past 24 months. Understand that this is all the elementals have had to work with. They have had to execute upon mankind and upon the planetary body a world transmutation that was not in full God harmony, but in the breaking down of the components of a heavy karma. And even through those storms and through those earthquakes, delivering unto the people, many people, beloved ones, their own karma, which did fall due under the dark cycle. Thus the lords of karma deem it a more decisive action and one that is more helpful to all people, that at a certain point, if they are not turning around toward God, if they are not setting aside their old momentums, it is pointless that they should continue decade after decade to a ripe old age when they can be born again through another's belly and born again of the spirit and take courage to challenge their karma and not continually live a life of selfishness unto the death. Thus there are many reasons why karma descends and one of the reasons is the mathematics of the formulas that belong to each and every life stream. The formula is complex, and when the karma is due to descend upon an individual, beloved ones, all that can mitigate that karma is how that one has lived his life, how that one has served God, his fellow man, or apprenticed himself to the great white brotherhood, or become a devotee of one of the masters of East or West. Thus, beloved ones, to serve, to set life free, and to continue on the path, all of you have bought time and postponed the day of certain karmas descending. This is the great law, beloved, ever merciful, ever desiring to give maximum opportunity to every single life stream upon earth. Some of you have wondered at the many thousands who have died recently in the earthquake in India. I tell you, beloved ones, many among those souls who were lost during this earthquake, whose bodies were no longer attached to their souls, who were among the Swernies, and were among those who did move against their hierarch, did move against their leader, and did not come into alignment with the true path of the sons of the solitude. Thus, beloved ones, they have gone many, many, many thousands of years, and they had come to the place where their continuous denial of the law, their denial of God, and their sensuous indulgence had brought them to the place where God is prepared to give them another opportunity. And that opportunity must be taken, beloved, for you all understand that opportunities do come to an end at a certain point in time and space. I discuss the law of karma and of reincarnation with you as it affects the interaction of elementals with the children of the earth, for the elementals are the ones who often deliver that karma, and they are there, beloved, under assignment from the lords of karma, and there are contingents, legions, of elementals that come from the four hierarchs and they are summoned and they do work exclusively with the delivering of the karma of the people of the earth through mother nature. How quaint it is that scientists have decided that storms have nothing to do with the wrath of God. Well, beloved, storms and lightning as well as drought as well as all conditions that are not normal in the weather patterns, 
These are caused by mankind's consciousness, by mankind's karma. This is caused by the fallen angels and their programming of elementals as well as humankind to darkness and dark deeds. Thus there is upheaval in the planet, thus there are many imbalances, and those individuals whose karma has cycled through their etheric body, the mental body, the astral body, and finally is about to enter into the physical manifestation, these ones, beloved, therefore receive the brunt of their karma delivered by these magnificent elementals who carry a heart of justice and a flame of justice and a flame of mercy. And they are accompanied by legions of angels who are entrusted with the same mission. And these angels do bring mercy where there are those who do not deserve the same measure of weight upon them through cyclone and through every manner of burden that is come upon the earth, especially in these days. May you understand, therefore, uh, that earth could be far more harmonious if each individual son and daughter of God would recognize that his four lower bodies can be expanded by meditation and by decree to be one with the entire planetary body. This is the world consciousness of the world mother. It is the world consciousness of her sons and daughters. When you have dominion in your four lower bodies and have the dominion that your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had when he was in embodiment, you will note that the strength of each of your four lower bodies will also strengthen each of the four lower bodies of planet Earth. Do you think that this is impossible? I tell you it is not impossible. Even science has realized how there can be ex the expansion even of the very pattern of the four lower bodies, the pattern of the rings upon rings of auric emanations. These can be expanded as easily to, su to the size of the earth as they are now resting surrounding your four lower bodies. This is the teaching of Gautama Buddha, whose magnificent presence and causal body, and even the replica of his four lower bodies when he was perfected, does lock in to the many layers of the earth to hold the balance of the earth. Understand, beloved, that by the power of your I am presence, you can increase, you can intensify, you can be a manifestation of the living Christ. This is your calling. This is why you were born. This is your mission. Do not be limited. Do not postpone to the morrow those services that you have committed to the hierarchy of light. El Moria is under God Mercury, and those who serve under him, beloved ones, surely move swiftly to bring from the etheric octave and to precipitate into the physical all the elements that El Moria requires to accomplish what must be accomplished through this organization. We are fairly bursting with teachings and information that must be codified, that must be presented, and presented in a manner that the little children can understand it, that people of all ages can understand it. And you who are scientists, you who operate in the field of health, in the field of medicine, you must understand how much more can be accomplished. Therefore, turn the dial of your vision to expansiveness, but do not expand to a greater level than the capacity that you are able to retain and maintain in the harmony of life. Think then, beloved ones, think then, of how you can strengthen the vessels of your being and hold those vessels on behalf of millions who are out of balance and out of alignment. Know then this strengthening process. Know that the Son of God is upon you in the person of your Holy Christ self, in the person of Jesus Christ and Saint Germain and the entire hierarchy of light. Be free, beloved. Be free in the vastness of the universal mind of the sylphs. Be free to expand into all levels 
of the atmosphere of the earth and beyond. Be free to know how vast is the mind of God and be free to know that you contain that mind and that you are one with the infinite now. Sometimes those who take their ascension, though rejoicing in the victory, look back with a certain sense of disappointment that they did not rise to the occasion in their final embodiment to truly meditate to the point of understanding that here on earth, even at this level, a great portion of that God consciousness can be realized to the benefit of all of humanity. Think, beloved ones, of the great powers of the rye of Swearn, powers of precipitation, power to stop an army and all of their weapons. Think of the concurrent civilization of Atlantis, where all was based on science, where there were not such adepts save the few sons of the solitude and a few black magicians. And thus, their attainment was all in science whereas the rye of the Swearnies, beloved ones, was able to do all these feats by the fire of his inner being. Understand, therefore, the great victory that can come about to you in the earth. Look, then, at the fiascos that happen in Somalia, in Yugoslavia, in all other areas. How ridiculous, how ridiculous you must say to yourselves all of this loss of life and destruction of property in Moscow, using crude physical power to change situations, to control peoples, to eliminate peoples. Do you understand, beloved, that you can change the earth by the power of God that is in you? You can do this. It is time that you took many leaps in consciousness it is time that you took the key of Neptune, that you opened the prison door and exited the very prison of your own mind. Long ago there was given to the mother of the flame in ancient times the key to liberate the soul from the carnal mind. So many are slaves of that mind. So many believe the limitations of that mind. Yes, beloved. This is the hour for your liberation. Think then and hasten the day as to what you can do to see to it that the light bearers of the earth have this message. Would to God I were speaking it now over satellite to every light bearer on this planet and all who could be light bearers if they were simply shown how. The technology is there the reality is there, and you have the mind of Christ. Now I say use it, and use all elemental life as you call to them to multiply that mind, that abundance, that substance, that know-how, and that determination that this will come to pass. For short of the keepers of the flame being able to give enough violet flame to save the planet, which they have not yet demonstrated. The only answer is to swell the ranks of keepers of the flame that many hundreds of thousands and millions more may do so with the same, very same teaching that you already have. It is in your very best interest, beloved, for the holding of the equilibrium of the earth to see to it that this message is disseminated. Therefore, I appeal to you, let the messenger be the messenger. May you then see to it that the message is distributed. I promise you that the sylphs will carry it to the four winds.
Thus, in the name of Rye Ernan, I speak to you, and I seal this message with all the love of billions upon billions of elementals, for they know every son and daughter of God throughout the planetary spheres. And in you, they place their trust, their hope, and their faith. God bless you one and all.